Hi, I'm Felicia. And I'm Giancarlo. And this is our preview of Hoyuk Anatolia, which is a second expansion, and not a second, I'm sorry, it's an expansion to Hoyuk. To the first one we did. Yes. Anatolia is an expansion for Hoyuk, a game we highly rated here on Board to Death. For this expansion, new progress must be made and achieved by your clan to make it a more prominent one. In the box, you'll get a progress board with three different achievement panels, 10 artifact meeples in five different colors, two per player, 25 drop counters in five different colors, five per player, 10 progress counters in five different colors, two per player, and 24 fest tokens of eight different types, three for each type. For Anatolia, place the progress board next to the setup Hoyuk board. Give each player their two artifact meeple, five drop counters, and two progress counters of their color matching their clan. Speaking of which, for Anatolia, clans cannot use their clan's unique abilities. Take all the fest counters and place them in a pool next to the board. Now starting with the first player and going clockwise, each player will place one of their progress token on one of the achievements on the progress board. The choices are from top to bottom, build artifacts, valley fest, and water supply system. Once all players have chosen a panel, another placement of the progress token continues, so as to have each player choose two achievements they'll try and complete for this game. Of course, completing one or more of their achievements will garner you victory points at the end of the game. It's important to note that when you start working on one of your achievements, you cannot begin to work on the other one you've chosen. You need to finish the first one you started completely. Let's look at these in detail. To build artifact achievement is the only achievement where you'll get a partial victory points if you don't complete it. As you can see here, you'll get 5 VPs at the end game for one artifact completed, or 10 VPs for two. Artifacts are built during the construction phase. To do so, you'll replace any element on the construction board with an artifact in it instead. Secondly, an artifact can only be placed on a two-level house. No other elements can be built there, besides villagers. Your second artifact can be built in a different block should you choose to, but must still follow these rules. Should a catastrophe affect a block where there are artifacts, all players lose their artifacts there. Should the shaman be in the block, then the artifacts are saved. This makes the shaman a lot more valuable compared to the soul base game. The Valley Fest achievement will make players get 5 different Fest tokens and offer them to Mother Earth as a token of appreciation for the goods they enjoy. To get these tokens, players will have to get aspect cards matching the image on the Fest tokens. There are 8 different images, but players only need to get 5 different ones. When a player has the 5 different aspect cards he needs, he can change them for those matching 5 Fest tokens during the construction phase. To do so, however, he will have to forego building one of the elements on that construction board. If he does, he gets the 5 Fest tokens. The aspect cards containing the metal tools designs act as jokers for any choice of Fest tokens. The Valley Fest achievement is the only one that once completed is secured for the rest of the game. This achievement will grant you 18 VPs. In the water supply achievement, you need to place all your drop counters on houses you own. For your first drop counter to be placed, the house must be built alongside or in the river and or lake. Like the other two achievements, you'll then be able to place your drop counter in the construction phase by replacing that action with one of the elements on the construction board. The next four drop counters must be placed on four other houses connecting them all to the first house with the drop counter on it. No other elements can be placed on these houses except for villagers. If a catastrophe forces you to break a house that has a drop counter on it, take the drop counter back. You may then try to place it again by building a house connecting to the others with your drop counter. If at the end game you have a successful water supply achievement by having all of your 5 drop counters on the board, you score 15 VPs. Anatolia introduces a second way to trigger the end game by having a player finish his two achievements. The player with the most VPs wins. We enjoyed Hoyuk very much and we can't wait to add the Anatolia expansion to it. It will offer players more choice from choosing the achievements to which one you want to do first and in deciding when you want to use the elements in the construction phase for those achievements. Remember, during the game you're still vying for the aspect cards and using those elements might be more crucial than using them for the achievements. The Kickstarter is already underway and to no surprise to us it's already funded. But it's not too late to get your copy of Anatolia. If you liked Hoyuk, this expansion is a must-have. And if you don't know Hoyuk, we strongly suggest you look into it and add it to your collection. 
We can't wait for the final product of Anatolia, as we're sure Mage Company will provide the same quality components as they did for Hoyok. And remember, if you like it, back it.